Good morning, everybody. It's another morning that we're not having church service, regular church service, but we are praising God and we are worshiping God. Just because we can't go to church and have a service, worship service, Sunday school, and all that does not mean that we can't worship God. Myself and the lady was talking about that this week. It's, it's sure not the same by a long ways. Not the same at all. But if you look back at the older days in Jesus' time, they worshiped Jesus, they worshiped the Lord. They didn't have a church to go to. But I sure hope we don't get to that point today in today's world. This week I was thinking a lot about something. I see a lot of things, pay a lot of attention. I see in today's world, Christian people and even ministers that are not turning away from Christ, but they're very confused. They don't know what's going on. And we still, even in today's world, with all the chaos and craziness, we still have to work for Jesus Christ. We have to lead people to Christ. We have to be an example. And in today's world, it's hard to do. But it's hard to live our Christian lives and be what we're supposed to be. But we got to do that. You know, it's it would be very hard for... Um, a person that's been blind since birth to paint a picture of a pretty red barn sitting on the hill in the country and the cows around about and the sun coming up on the frosty field because that person that's been blind has never saw that, never experienced that. We can tell them about it, but they've never experienced it. But the same way with a Christian and living a Christian life. We cannot be good Christian people and be somebody who leads others to Christ and tell them about Christ if we don't experience that ourselves. If we don't know Christ, if we haven't seen what Christ does, if we haven't experienced a Christian life and live the way that we should, how are we going to tell others about it? You know, Jesus talked in the book of Matthew about the blind leading the blind. Matthew 15, 14, he was talking to the scribes and Pharisees, and he said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. We cannot do that, people. We cannot call ourselves Christian people and ministers for Jesus Christ and not live that life, not experience that. And like I said, I know it's hard today, you know, because we feed from each other. We feed from Christian brothers and sisters. We feed from the Word of God and the experiences and worship services that we have in our churches and all that and Sunday school and learning and reading the Word of God. But what we have to do is we have to stick together, first, unity, as Christian peoples. We have to hold our faith, and we have to not be the blind leading the blind. We have to be an example for other people. You know, in today's world, it's not easy. But the blind leading the blind would be a lot of us. But you think about what? What blinds us from the Word of God? What blinds us from a Christian life? I see in today's world the worry, the stress, the separation of Christians, the separation of families because of not just the whatever that's going around, COVID-19, but also the election, you know, Republican, Democrat, all the questions in the world today of what's right and what's wrong. You know, there Jesus said, I come not to bring peace, but a sword, so that 
son is against father, brother against brother, sister against sister, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and so on. But Jesus is not doing that today. Yes, the Word of God separates some of us. We don't agree on everything, but the world today is separating Christian people, and I do not want to see that. We, we can't, as Christians, be separated. Different opinions and different prospects and different views and expect others to come to Christ through us. That just won't work. We are the blind leading the blind if we if we do that. You know, Jesus was talking here to the scribes and the Pharisees, which were supposed to be the keepers of the law, the good people, the teachers. But they were talking about the disciples was not following their customs. It says, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elder? Tradition of the elders, not the law. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But Jesus said, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, honor your father and mother. And he that curses his father and mother, let him die to death. But ye say that where whosoever shall say to his father and mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father and mother, he shall be free. This was what there was people in that day that was not taking care of their parents or father and mother that needed help, and they was giving gifts to the temple. They was giving their money to the temple if they did that, or something associated with the temple. They they wrote them off as okay. Said you be free. But name what was supposed to happen. It says, Thus have you made the commandment of God no no none effect by your tradition. What traditions today do we have? I see people arguing about whether we're gonna have church or whether we ain't gonna have church. Whether we're gonna wear a mask or not wear a mask, whether we're gonna have service inside or outside. If we don't be careful, this is gonna divide the churches, divide the Christian people. We still have one God to worship. We still worship the same God. We have different uh, outlooks and different perspectives on things because we are different people. But still we have one God. But Jesus called them hypocrites. He said, you hypocrites. Well did Elijah the prophet say, the people draw nigh to me with their mouth, but and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Our hearts is what counts. We cannot, with all the stuff in the world, you know, the election being one of them, I see it separating people, people that used to be friends because they have different views. People that used to be good friends. People that used to associate with each other, now they don't. People fuss at somebody because they got a sign up in the yard. You know, it don't matter to me. It, well, it does matter to me, but it don't make any difference who the president of the United States is. God's still in charge. It don't make any difference how we have church services as long as we worship the Lord. But it would sure be nice to be back in our church, wouldn't it? It would be nice to be back to the things we're used to. It says, but in vain they do worship me, teaching from the doctrines the commandments of men. It says, hear and understand, not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which coming out cometh out of the mouth. And these disciples wanted to know what that meant. But he said, every plant which my heavenly Father is not planted shall be rooted up. Nor unless we're rooted in Jesus Christ, we're not going to lead others to Christ. We're not going to be the light of the world. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And he told us to let our light shine, not hide it under a bucket somewhere, but put it on the hill so people can see it. And if we do that, we will lead others to Christ. But if we constantly are worried to death, if we not wrote some stuff down, worry, stress, all these things that separate us from Jesus Christ. Worry, stress, uncertainty, doubt. 
there's a lot of uncertainty in today's world, but one thing that is certain is Jesus Christ is going to return. And if we follow him, we're going to be with him. That's one thing that's certain. Jesus Christ and all this other stuff, Jesus Christ don't change. The Holy Spirit don't change. It's still there. So then let, he said, that's when he said, let them alone. For they be leaders of the blind. And the blind leading the blind will fall into a pit. But Peter asked him, he said, what do you mean by all this? Jesus said, don't you understand? He said that whatever enters a man's mouth goes in the body and is cast out into the drought. In other words, what goes in your body goes through your body. But those things which proceed out of your mouth come forth from the heart and they defile the man. You know, what, what comes forth from our mouth that defiles us? Arguments about anything to do with the virus, arguments about anything to do with the election, arguments about whether we should have church, whether we shouldn't have church. You know, I see churches, there was a church, uh, well, is a church, that I hear about from a lady up toward Harrisonburg a lot. And every time I see her, she tells me something about the church, about the minister, about this person and that person. But they're not in agreement on anything. I see a lot of churches that way. And people have different outlooks, is what I'm saying. People have different outlooks on all this. And that don't mean at all that we're wrong, any of us. None of us is wrong, but we got to quit fighting about it. We got to quit arguing about it. Satan will use anything he can to separate our churches, to separate us from the love of Christ, to separate us from worshiping Christ, to separate us, to cause stress, to cause doubt, to cause uncertainty. Satan will use whatever he can to do that, and he's having a glory day. You know, he says, but these things are things which... Uh, defile a man for out of the heart our heart that's what makes us defiled proceed evil thoughts murders, adulteries fornications, theft false witness, blasphemies these are the things which defile a man but he said to eat with unwashed hands and not defile a man defile a man you know, we can go on and on in that but what does Christians need today is the question to not be blind leaders, to not be the blind leading the blind. As I said, we can't paint a picture of a, Christian, a good Christian life if we don't live that good Christian life. We can't paint a picture of a good Christian life if we constantly bicker and argue and worry and all that stuff. And others see that. Others see so-called Christians, us, Roger Sager. Others see me, and they see how I deal with things. And if we let Satan keep on and keep on till he gets the best of us, you know, we're going to be in trouble. So I'm saying, Jesus Christ told the disciples in Matthew 28, he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things wherefore whatsoever I have commanded you. How can we teach others what's right and wrong if we don't follow that? If you go to the book of Colossians, Colossians, Chapter 1, verses 3 through 13, I believe it is. What, what does a Christian need to do that we're not the blind leading the blind, or the blind trying to paint a picture of something we, we, we don't know what it looks like? You know, you got to know what something looks like, what something feels like, before you can tell somebody else about it. And that's what I'm saying here. But what does Christians need to do 
in a time like the world is in the shape that the world's in today. You know, we can't have a church service. We can't go visit people. We can't hug people, shake hands with people. We can't socialize with people as we did. And, you know, we used to have a men's breakfast first Saturday every month. I really miss that. We have Bible study. We had prayer meetings. We don't have that anymore. But still, it does not mean that you can't sit at home and pray for people. It don't mean that you can't sit at home and pray to God to help you through your situations, to help the world. As I said many times, the Israelites, God's chosen people, was in exile. They was in bad shape a lot of times. But they cried out to God, and he heard their cries. And it says, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But, and it says, continue in praying. And that's what this was here in Colossians. Paul is talking about the people here that was sent there in the church in Colossians. It says, we give thanks to you in verse 3. Give thanks to God and the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray always for you. Do we pray for other Christians or do we do put them down because they don't think like we do? Think about that. Since we heard of your faith in Christ and of the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. These people that we don't agree with, these people that are Republicans and we're Democrats or Democrats and we're Republicans, the people think we already have a church and if we don't think we already have a church, if people wear a mask, the people wash their hands, the people socialize, people don't socialize. Yes, we all have different views. Like I said before, we'd all be driving forwards and married to a blonde if we all thought the same way, but we don't. But we do have the same God, the same Jesus, the same person that we're worshiping, and the same faith and the same hope and the same heaven that we're going to get to. And we got to realize that. If you go on over here, it's in verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. People don't realize how much prayer amounts to praying for somebody. We might not be able to be with that person, be with that person sitting in church saying, praise the Lord and hallelujah. But Jesus Christ gave us a rule book. He gave us a life, a book to live our life by, which is the Bible, the Word of God. And we got to follow that. It says, and this is what a Christian can do to help out in today's world. Pray always. It says, and that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. How are we increasing the knowledge of God? Read your Bible. How do we be fruitful? We be an example. Be the picture painted that people can see, and don't be the blind leading the blind. Be the picture, be the picture of Christ, a Christ-like life. It says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. As I said the other week, it's hard to be joyful in a time like this. But is, is this stuff that's happening in the world, does it change the end goal for us? Does it change heaven? No. Does it change Jesus Christ? No. Does it change the Holy Spirit? No. Jesus Christ is still our same God, our same Heavenly Father. He gave us the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. We still have the same thing in the end. It don't matter what's happening now. And we can argue, we can fuss, we can get mad at people, we can put up signs, we can post stuff on Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, all that. All that's for is arguing. But we can do all that, but does it change anything? You know, you can go out here and fuss right now and look out the window, sitting here in my gun room, and the sun's shining. I can go out there and fuss and scream and holler and shoot and air whatever I want to do because the sun's shining, and it'll still be shining. You can fuss and send messages and whatever you want to do about stuff you don't agree with to other people, whether it's politics or the sun shining, and it's not going to change it. They will just know your view, yes. 
But will you cause arguments? Yes, you will, guarantee you. Whatever's wrote in this book, yeah, you got reason to argue about. Whatever your opinion is, it's sad to say, but you don't have a reason to argue about. As long as it goes along with Jesus Christ, you might. It says, strengthen with all might according to the glorious power unto all patience, long suffering with joyfulness. Give thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Light, not blindness, not darkness, light. To who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. He delivered us from darkness. The Bible states a lot of times they uh, incorporate or associate darkness, blindness, and all that with sin. You know, if you was your life prior to being a Christian, if you was in the darkness, you was in sin. Now you're not. You're in the light. The light of the world is Jesus Christ. You know, and you can't be a person blinded by the world today and all the things in it and be an example, be a shining light, be a picture painted for other people to see if you're still living in that darkness and you cannot do that if you go to Ephesians in chapter 3 chapter 4 I got chapter 3 here chapter 4 and if you go to Ephesians chapter 4 I preached on this different times and it's something that a Christian person and a church and a congregation needs to hear time and time again you know, the one guy asked the preacher one time, he said, why? Why do you keep preaching on the same thing? Your sermon seemed all, almost all on the same thing. He said, in the one sermon you preached, you preached this Sunday, you preached next Sunday, you preached next Sunday. He said, what's up with that? He said, I'll quit preaching it when you start listening to it and start living by it. Do we need reminded? Yes, we need reminded. I do. Roger Sager does. I don't preach just to you guys. I preach to Roger, too. Because, yes, I can find a lot of stuff to argue with people about, but does it do any good? No, that just tells them what my point of view is. Yes. Does it separate them? Does that lead them to Jesus Christ? No, I don't think so, Tim. That don't lead them to Jesus Christ. It makes them not want to talk to me. And if they don't want to talk to me, how am I ever going to lead them to Jesus? If they see me living a life that does not comply with the Word of God and does not follow the commandments of God what kind of picture am I painting for them you know I can't paint a picture of a pretty red barn on the hill if I ain't seen it I can't paint a picture of a Christian life and tell somebody else to have joyfulness joyfulness to have long suffering to have patience to not have doubt not have stress not have all these other things that turn us away from Jesus Christ and blind us from Jesus Christ and create doubt that's the biggest thing in the world today that I see Christians dealing with is doubt. Is Jesus really there? Is there really a God? Yes, there's really. There, nothing has changed. Do you think the disciples did not doubt when they were taken into exile? Do you think David didn't doubt when he got whooped up on in battle because he didn't follow the word of God and follow the, the commandments of God? Yeah, the word. And you can read the book of Psalms and he tells you, Lord, where am I at? Is he afraid? Yeah, read Psalm 22, Psalms 88. It says, he feared, he was afraid. Where are you at, Lord? How long are you going to stay away from me? But if you read the rest of that, it says that he always comes back. When you follow God, when you do the commandments of God and read your Bible, and be joyful and be experience long suffering. Have patience. When you do that, you can paint a picture to other people. But Ephesians chapter one, excuse me, chapter four, verse one. I'll get it right directly. It says therefore, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation 
wherewith you are called. And what are, what are we called? What did Jesus say in Matthew 28? Go ye therefore and preach unto all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching the commandments of God. How are we going to do that if we don't follow them? You know, we can't paint pictures that people can't, that we can't see. You know, if somebody told me to write down and draw a picture of the inside of a computer and how it would give a description of how it works, they, you know, it's like a monkey flying an airplane. I might as well forget that. I can't do it because I do not know. But what did it say back here? Know your scripture, read your Bible, that you can have answers for other people. Be joyful, be happy. And yeah, I know that's a good thing to say at a time like today, but you can do it. There's still, that we still win. We still win. It don't matter what the game, what happens till halftime, we still win. Read the end of it, we still win. There's still the new heaven and the new earth where there shall be no more tears and no more suffering, and we shall Praise and honor the Lord Jesus Christ day and night. We shall walk on the streets of gold. It don't matter how we get there. It's still the same thing. It don't matter what happens till halftime. But we can't be the blind leading other people blind. Jesus said they'll both fall in the ditch. But what can we do? It says to live, verse 2, with all lowliness and meekness. Along, there's long suffering again. Forbearing one another in love, not in arguments, in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. How do we do that? We don't have to have the same perspectives and the same ideas as other people about which president's best, which governor's best, which senate is best. We don't have to have the same perspectives on whether we need to have turkey or deer meat for Thanksgiving dinner or fried taters and gravy or Brussels sprouts and carrots. But we still have the same God. We still worship the same God. And the same Holy Spirit is in all of us. And we need to let our light shine and let people see that picture, not something else. Not a picture of a grouchy old grumpy guy sitting with a green coat and a bogging on, not talking to nobody and being hateful, being mad because things don't go his way in life. We're Christian people. Paint that picture. But it says, verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It don't say a bunch of them. It says one. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. It don't say in some of us. It says in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And it goes on to talk about when he ascended up on how he led captivity captives and gave gifts unto men. You know, I could argue about that. People say, Does that don't mean he descended into hell. When he ascended up on high, he led captivities captives on back there and said he descended, ascended, descended into the lower parts of the earth. People argue about that. Led captivity captive. Who did he leave? He gave gifts unto men. Did he give the people in hell a chance? Did Jesus descend into hell after he was crucified when he was gone for three days and dead? Did he do that? Descend into hell and lead the, give the people a chance that was there to go with him to heaven? You know, read on that. Give you something to do today other than watching football and arguing with people. But, you know, we can start arguments about anything. I mentioned this many times. My father and another minister argued, well, argued, had a disagreement for years about what the Bible says. The truth shall make you free. If you read another version, it says the truth shall set you free. Discussed that for years and kind of, you know, they had very different opinions about it. You go back and read the old original script. 
This is the truth. Jesus shall free you. Don't say either one set you free or make you free. You know, a lot of things in like that in life, if we really get into it and study it, as I said before, what are we going to change by arguing? What are we going to change by being disagreeable with people? What are we going to change by telling somebody just what we think and our opinion make them mad and they won't talk to us for six months? Well, if they don't talk to us for two days and in that two days they pass away, how are you going to feel about that? Could you have led them to Christ instead of run them off? Could you have told them to read the Bible and instead of telling them to read up on Trump what he did, read up on Biden what he did? Yep, we're still the same people sitting in the same house with the same Lord. We still worship the same God. Don't matter who's in control here on earth. We still have the same Holy Spirit in us that does not change. God said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he won't change. He was there to start with, and he's going to be there in the end. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and he won't. He said, and if you live for me and follow my commandments, I will take care of you, in layman's terms. And God will do that. But think, as you go through the rest of the day and through this week, think about what kind of picture you are painting for other people to see in the world today. Think about what kind of example you are to other people in the world today. You know, as I said before, a blind man... It's sad, but, and I don't understand at all how a blind person gets along, and I really, really feel for them. But, you know, close your eyes and try to walk around. Close your eyes and just try to keep them closed and see the darkness. That's all you see when you close them. See the darkness. or that You don't see what's around you. You know, how are you going to tell somebody about Jesus Christ if you've not experienced him if you don't know him and you can't tell them what he is like you're not going to be able to but how's other people going to see a picture of Jesus Christ in you when you're painting some other kind of picture think about that I want to end with a prayer I want to apologize for last week there was uh, something happened with me and my phone, the technology today is not good for me, but something happened about six or eight minutes of the last sermon I did last week was lost, and I don't know what happened to it, but then I could argue about that, but it won't do any good, it is what it is. Well, let's end with a prayer today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to have a God to worship thank you for your son Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us and will do we thank you for our congregation our church our churches our brothers and sisters in Christ and Lord let us learn unity let us learn joy peace long-suffering patience and let us paint a picture of a Christian person not a doubtful person or a stressful person but a Christian person for other people to see. God, let us lead others to Christ and let us work always for you. Thank you for our blessings, our material blessings, physical blessings, and spiritual blessings. Lord, we pray for each and every person that has the virus. We know it's bad, Lord. We pray that you be with them, be with their families. We pray, Lord, that you just remove this virus from this country. Let people turn to you. Let people pray. Continue without ceasing. Let them pray. And Lord, remove this from us, this pestilence that we have. And let us be able to get back to our churches, our congregations, congregations, our brothers and sisters in Christ. But Lord, through all that, let us not doubt. Let us not be stressful. Let us have patience and wait upon the Lord. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you all.